Hi everyone, I'm John Lin, the founder and chief editor at Healthcare IT Today. We're excited to bring you another in our series of interviews with top leaders in health IT. We're at the HIMSS 2022 conference and we're here with Bob Rogers. He's AI expert in residence at the Center for Digital Health Innovation at UCSF. And we're with Sri Ambati, CEO and co-founder of h 20 AI. Welcome guys. It's great to be here, in person, live. Yeah, hallelujah, right? Thank <laughs> you for having us. Yeah, so Bob, tell us a little bit. Can you share about the partnership between H2O AI and UCSF? Yeah, so we at UCSF receive 1.4 million faxes a year. Oh, wow. And they're a huge variety of different types of document. 300,000 of them are referrals. Mm -hmm. And so right before we started all this work, these faxes were all processed manually by people reading a fax, figuring out what to do with it, goes into a queue. Someone else reads it, goes into another queue. And so what we wanted to do was automate the technology, build a pipeline that could process these things and allow us to handle each one of them in a much more rapid way, but also reduce the errors associated with the manual processes. Well, we have a team of data scientists and we have many, many faxes, but what we needed was to really pull together the latest technologies, the latest tooling for managing models and AI, and, and some of the world's greatest experts, and so we turned to H2O to help us with the project. Interesting, and you guys recently announced Document.ai, which is what they used to solve this problem. Tell us a little bit more about it, Shri. Document.ai is um, our foray into making sure the leading source of data today in enterprise is documents and unstructured data over the last two years of COVID. And so people are able to take documents, not just specific to one point solution, but solve entity recognition from there, pull out interesting uh, elements from the, from the documents, and start feeding other kind of downstream AI engines so that they can start predicting uh, using documents as a source of data. Interesting. Yeah, and I think it's interesting, I heard Bob that that you actually were told that maybe it wasn't possible to do this with structured documents. Talk about that and kind of how it evolved. We had, a, uh, UCSF brought in a panel of experts to advise us. Okay. And after we explained what we were trying to do, they said, well, that can't really be done. It's impossible. And three weeks later, our first results came out showing that not only were we able to do it, but we were able to do it with excellent performance. So the, the whole, the whole story there is that the ability to read from a document has to do with putting things in context. So the words have to be in context, but also the shape of the document tells you what the information means. I mean, if you've got a demographics box and a name in it, well, that's a patient name. But if there's just a, something that says name sitting over here, you've got to figure it out some other way. So the, the document AI technology really allows us to put the language in context and the shape of the document in context using the most recent sort of computer vision and natural language understanding technologies. And, um, and sure enough, our intuition was correct. H2O was able to do it and, um, and we got really good performance. So what have been the outcomes from it? Like what efficiencies have you gained? What's been the experience for the end users who maybe used to do that job? You know, how are they reacting? Yeah, well, first of all, they love it. We're heroes in the health system. What we've done is, and this is a huge team of product managers and designers, AI people, software engineers, building a, a, a referrals automation pipeline. So the first thing, the document comes in and we figure out what kind of document it is. If it's a referral, it goes into the referrals automation pipeline. Okay. The other documents will be going into other pipelines over time. Okay. The referrals automation pipeline then extracts a lot more information through the document AI process. And then those pieces of information are presented to the care coordinators who can look to see if it's correct, add anything that they need to add, and then it, and it moves on. The impact of all this is we're starting to be able to schedule patients much, much faster. The patients are being sent to the right place. There's no delays because you know the queues get backed up. The other thing is there's a lot less errors because humans who are doing a really good job of this kind of work are still very, um, they're very variable in what, how they perform. Sure. And so that variability 
makes it very hard to do downstream processes. And so what we've seen is patients are being scheduled more rapidly. Um, clinicians are getting more accurate information about the patients that they're seeing, which makes it a better overall experience for, for everybody. And uh, we're able to now contemplate the next steps in that automation pipeline because the data is now reliably and, and consistently encoded. Yeah. So Sri, how good have we gotten at this, right? I mean, this is an interesting example. And, and the fact that experts told them, no, it can't be done. <laughs> I think the key thing is um, the several major breakthroughs that have happened in the last 18, 24 months in NLP. Okay. Like the BERT models, pre-built models. And then of course we've had unlocked treasures of wins from the ImageNet over the years, right? Mm -hmm. So combining them together was one piece of it. But typically customers or our partners trying to build software in this, they try to not work very closely together. In our case, we co-created mm -hmm. with the help of Bob's team, right, sort of and, and UCSF that we were able to kind of learn what they had already done, like for example in labeling. And we found out that annotation, labels, and then training, all of that needs to be, coexist, as mm -hmm. opposed to yeah. labeling in some far off place, sure. yeah. and then you, you, you almost remove the domain expert okay. from the space, right, from the problem solving. Uh -huh. And where the AI is wrong, it's interestingly wrong. So you want to go back and re-label re and have the AI learn from those, those feedback mm -hmm. loops. And I think that was the interesting thing about this co where we had a tight-knit feedback loop, and over time, that problem generalized from a small set of documents. Uh -huh. So the, the key, key piece was we did not need to kind of like use a very large corpus. From a small set of documents, we could generalize um, a, a solution that would work across referrals of several kinds. Yeah, you, you really hit on a really important point that the very specific question that needs to be answered to make this pipeline work was something that our, our data scientists and our clinical care coordinators could provide to the H2O team. We could work together to make sure that the exact right questions were being answered. And as you said, the annotation was right. So that really led to a much more complete, applicable set of solutions for the problem. It's taking pre-built models that are generalized across a wide range of corpus uh -huh. and then customizing it or transfer learning from that to the local corpus and, and, and making sure we get consistent labeling yeah. and then essentially making sure that we can solve not just one point solution in, in document AI or in that space. Typically you have a lot of brittle point solutions that don't have, that break when it sees uh -huh. a new kind of sure. document. And I think what we have is a, is a framework that allows customers to not just look at invoices, referrals, Right, sort of um, medical lab tests sure. and, and, and a whole gamut of problems. And that's kind of where, where our, our close partnership with customers comes in. And you're hitting a really important point that's actually a technology discriminating feature for w what you did with Document AI. Um, you're able to tune that model to our data. It's already been trained on sure. a mass, huge amount of, of other data, uh -huh. but then you're tuning it. That's not always possible with different products. Mm -hmm. That ended up being really important and it gave us that extra bit of performance that we needed to be able to go across this very vast array of different types of documents. And then creates trust for the end user, which exactly. I think is key. Yeah. So what's next for the use cases? What else are you looking at? Where are you, where are you headed with this next? So, yeah, go ahead. Let, let me add to one sure. interesting aspect of it. These are like document processing, OCR, right? they have been around for a while. And what you're seeing is typically leapfrog from the 60, 70 percent accuracy to mid 90s, 95 plus percent accuracy. Once you go to that level of accuracy and you're applying it for a problem that UCSF and H2O is very passionate about, which is saving lives, a yeah. cancer referral is a, a, a person on the other side waiting for a, a match for a clinic and his tumor is growing rapidly yeah, sometimes. Absolutely. And so this has meaning for meaningful, it's innovation that has meaning and can save lives. And that's where we are super excited about that, uh, about the joint work we're doing where these documents, once they start, once you start uh, reading them with high accuracy, 
now you can push the pressures downstream yeah, and improve nice. the workflows there. Yeah, no, it's, it's absolutely true. We're, on our side, I mean, you've got amazing data scientists on your side, Kaggle Grandmasters. I mean, yeah. you know, our team is very excited to work with them. <laughs> we have great data scientists as well because they're, they're really motivated by that mission. It helps both sides really, really grow. When you asked about where we're going next, there's a, there's a whole spectrum of things. I mean, one of them is we're doing a lot more work now since the pandemic in instrumenting virtual care. So finding ways to be connected with patients when they're outside the four walls of the hospital. Sure. And that is, that is all work that's AI driven. Um, clinicians are being driven crazy by the proliferation of uh, text and email messages coming through the EHR. Yep. And so we're building technology around routing that information and just sometimes it's triage, sometimes it's more semantic understanding of what needs to go where, but there's all these different different ways to, um, to really improve the way we're giving care. And ultimately, I think the biggest impact of this project has been to help people understand what AI actually is. Oh, because we all have an idea of AI. <laughs> I mean, and we've all seen Terminator. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, there's all these, these mixed, you know, ideas and emotions. And so when we started, people had this idea that this AI was something that's coming in sort of trying to displace doctors or you know, find ways to get rid of clinical care coordinators, all of which wasn't really true. But what this is doing is answering a very specific question. What kind of document is this? What's the name of the patient? What's the referral for? Like very, very specific slices. Now that people have seen it work, they're like- They wanna do more. <laughs> exactly, exactly. All of UCSF is sort of buzzing with the excitement of what could happen and you know, we're getting requests. Oh, could you do this? Could you do that? And in a lot of cases, the answer is yes, with you know, budget and people. And <laughs> <laughs> I think it's pipelining, right? Sort of once you get one solution work, then you can create pipelines that uh, allow like that. for a much larger piece of work to be automated. Or, I mean, it's oftentimes the boring work that comes in the way of how we can reimagine things and patient-centric care, yeah. and this boring, boring stuff, which hospitals are ridden with, mm -hmm. it, it kills a lot of the efficiency that would otherwise be focused on making patients such, like more healthier. And I think that's kind of where we are coming in, we're with AI that can remove away the boring stuff. So then the doctors, the nurses, and the entire staff can focus on the important stuff yeah. of saving. Unleashes their creativity. I, and I, I will say that the, the care coordinators who are using referrals automation love it. They're very excited about it. I mean, they're finding their lives are better. It used to be, a, I think, a fairly high turnover role, and I think uh -huh. that's changing. That's awesome. Well, over time, I think the number one um, inertia for AI is trust and safety. So by plugging it into H2O AI Cloud, we're able to continuously validate these models. Yeah, so we build a model, it's good, but then you not need to continuously run benchmark tests to, so that as data drifts, you rebuild the model so it's up to date. But it's as, at the same time, when the model's not right, all models are wrong, some models are useful, sure. can I learn from that where it's wrong so I can improve it again and continue to keep the, the AI side up to date and there's an incredible team behind Document AI uh, some, of, some of them Kaggle Grandmasters right. and some product great folks working with, um, with customers closely. But I think that space is still new. And so what, that co-creation with customers, our vision is to make Bob a, a world's leading practitioner of AI. I, our vision is to make our customers AI first. And to do that, we have to essentially make, democratize AI. And that means make it faster, cheaper, easier but also make it, make it part of the day-to-day -day yeah. so that it doesn't Absolutely. have to stand out. You know, you make a great point and you talked about feedback loops. One of the things that we've been really uh, vehement about and uh, H2O has really helped us with is making sure that the feedback from when somebody reviews the results from the algorithm and sometimes they have to correct, correct something, mm -hmm. that correction finds its way back into the training data for the next generation of the algorithm. If you don't have that, you don't have yeah. machine learning, you it's just have really machine learned. learned. Yeah, that's really great. 
Well, thanks so much for sharing this uh, incredible use case, Bob and Shri. Uh, this is really interesting and it's a great perspective. And it, you know, it sounds like it's really impactful on your organization, unleashed that creativity. And thanks everyone for watching. If you want to find more great healthcare IT content like this, be sure to check it out at healthcareittoday.com or search for Healthcare IT Today on your favorite podcasting application. Thanks, guys. Thank you.